In this video we'll be dividing these polynomials by a monomial and uh, we'll just do these four examples. So please write down the first example, it's 4a plus 2b all over 2. Okay, 4a plus 2b over 2. So write this down, now the trick really in this video is it's the first time that we're dealing with a fraction bar that goes all the way across more than just one number. It goes all the way across the 4a and the 2b. So you've written this out and writing that out you need to recognize that that fraction bar goes across everything on the top and then there's just a 2 on the bottom. So it's different than this. I mean what would this mean? 4a over 2 plus 2b. Right? Well, here's another one. 4a plus 2b over 2. So I want you to think about what does what does this mean, what does this mean, what does this mean, you know? So in this, the, the problem we actually have, it's 4 apples plus 2 bananas uh, divided by 2. This says 4 apples divided by 2 plus 2 bananas. This says 4 apples plus 2 bananas divided by 2. So I just want you to recognize, do you think there's a difference between this, this, and this, right? So, like, if you took this one, this example, you would be just dividing the four apples by two. Four apples divided by two gives two apples, right? And then we have plus two bananas, right? This one, the four apples is not being divided by two. So this would be four apples plus what? But here, the two bananas are divided by two, so that's one banana, right? So this would be four apples plus one banana, right? But 4a plus 2b all over 2, you see that that's different again. See, that's different again. That's going to be, that's the same thing as um, 4 apples divided by 2 plus 2 bananas divided by 2, right? So it's each term divided by 2. That's why they put the fraction bar underneath each term. That's why that's the reason for using a big long fraction bar is because they want you to divide every single thing up here. Okay? So it's like saying you have four apples and two bananas divided equally among two children. Each child gets four A over two, two apples, two bananas over two, plus one banana or plus B, right? Two A plus B, same thing. Two A plus B, right? And that's different than these answers. This one would have been 2a plus 2b, this would be 4a plus 1b, and so on. So let's write down the next example, 3c plus 2p all over 3. That's 3 cherries plus 2 pears divided by 3. Write this one down and see if you can do it. Okay, so again, this fraction bar is dividing everything, not just the 3C. I mean, most students can see we've got to divide this by 3 to get 1, to get C, to get 1C, right? But they don't want to divide this one. But you need to, because that's what it's saying. It's saying divide everything by 3. Divide the whole thing, not just the 3C, but the 2P as well, right? Because, I mean, your way to look at it is that, I mean, this could have been written... 2p plus 3c all over 3. Then what would you do? You know. Then students say, "Oh, oh, okay. I I do need to divide the 2b by 3, as well." Yeah, but you do in both cases. See, if it's all divided by 3, it means everything divided by 3. It means 3c divided by 3, and the two I'll call them pizzas divided by 3. Okay. So three cherries divided by 3, and also two pieces divided by three. What does that mean? It means that each child gets how many cherries? They get one cherry and how many pizzas? If you have two pizzas divided among three children, how many or three people, how many does each how many pizzas does each, each person get? It's two pizzas divided by three. Well they get two thirds of a pizza, right? So here's two pizzas, split them into thirds. Here's two thirds for one person. 
the red ones, here's two green ones, two two thirds for another person, and here's two thirds for somebody else. Okay? So here's a third, another two two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, right? Two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. So two peaks is split among three people, each person gets two thirds. Okay? And again, that's different than, you know, if they just wanted you to divide the 3C, they would have written it how? How would, if, 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 if they just wanted you to divide 3C by 3, well, how would they write that problem? They would write it like this, 3C over 3 plus 2P, and they wouldn't bother with the fraction bar going all the way underneath the 2P as well, okay? And in this case, 1C plus 2P would be correct. But because everything is divided by 3, we also have to divide the pizza by 3, so we get one cherry and two-thirds of the pizza, right? There we go. Okay, let's see if you can do this one. It's 14x minus 28y all over negative 7. So back into the world of x and y, and we're leaving the world of apples and bananas and pizzas and cherries. So, write it down, 14x minus 28y over negative 7. And can you do this? So what we were tr I was trying to explain was that when you have a fraction bar that goes all along everything, it means divide every single thing by the bottom, by negative 7. So it means you take the 14x and you divide that by negative 7. But you also take the negative 28y, or you could think of it as, you know, subtract 28y either way and divide that also by negative 7, okay? So you divide each term by negative 7. I, I don't mind how you think about this as, as subtract 28y or negative 28y, it's the same thing. There's one negative sign there, and he needs to come down here. Okay. Each term needs to be divided by negative 7. Okay. So you just simplify each fraction. So let's start with this one. It's 14x over negative 7. That's positive over negative, and that gives negative. 14 over 7. 2, and we also have an x, so negative 2x, right? This fraction is negative over negative. What does that make? Positive. 28 over 7 gives what? 20, 28 over 7 is 4, and we also have a y, right? Now let's do this one, write it down, and do it all by yourself. Negative 48z plus 3d all over negative 6. negative 48z plus 3d all over negative 6. So write it down and press pause on the video and do it all by yourself. Press pause on the video, do the whole thing yourself. Okay, I hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to walk through it now just in case you need help. So the this means we got to divide everything by negative 6. The whole thing by negative 6. So we're going to take the negative 48z we're going to divide that by negative 6. We're going to take the plus, see that plus, plus 3d. We're going to divide that also by negative 6. So everything gets divided by negative 6. Then we simplify each fraction one at a time. Starting with this fraction, what will the sign be? It's a negative over negative. That should give positive, right? And what's 48 over 6? 8. So positive 8z, right? The, the z did not cross cancel with anything. Now we have a positive over a negative. You can think of this as positive 3d or plus 3d, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Positive over negative gives what? Positive over negative gives negative. And we can do this. 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 6 goes two times. So it's minus 1d on the top, which is d, all over 2 on the bottom. So 8c minus d over 2, and um, a donut divided by 2 is the same thing as half of a donut, isn't it? Right? So, I mean, that's, that's what I was trying to explain with these, these fractions. So here's a donut, right? Now there's no difference between a donut divided in two. So if I divide that donut in two, okay, 
here's half of it. So a donut divided by two is the same thing as half of a donut, isn't it? Half of a donut equals a, div a donut divided by two, right? So that's what we have here. Now you can think of that as one D over two, or one half times D, right? So we have eight Z minus a half D, it can be written this way, or this way, either way, but it'd be nice if you'd write it both ways just so you can learn that, because that does come up in algebra a lot.